Hello everyone, it's Mark here. Thanks for coming along with me. We just got to do a quick pre-trip inspection and then we'll be getting on our way. Doing my regular route from Tacoma to Portland, Portland to Vancouver, British Columbia in Canada. So checking the oil, uh, the belts can't be too loose, can't be too tight. I uh, gotta make sure we've got some braking power down here. It's looking good. Fuel. Yeah, got enough to get to Portland. We'll fuel up there. And we start off driving and drive into the night. And then, before you know it, we're just north of the border, in Canada. Now you may be seeing just a regular old hay field. But in actuality, maybe you should see it as a T-bone steak field. Or maybe a field of double cheeseburgers. Because after all, beef eat hay. And uh, even though they don't really sell hay in the supermarkets for us to eat, it uh, is also fed to cows, which produce butter and milk and ice cream, frozen yogurt. So many things are derivatives of hay. So it really is important for uh, human consumption for there to be good productive hay fields around. And according to Wikipedia, there's a long process for hay making. First, it starts with the cutting. It's like a, a lawnmower that comes behind the, the tractor and cuts the hay. And uh, then we've got the raking, which is an attachment also on the tractor. It's a big V-shaped thing with uh, some rollers that that uh, siphon the hay into long furrows or rows so that then they can attach a baler to the tractor and the baler uh, pretty much just brushes up all that hay and rolls it into these bales. It has a chamber where it, r it starts rolling the hay into a round chamber. When it's full, it spits out a bale in back now I'm trying to do a circuit around this particular bale trying to make it as smooth as possible still gonna need some more practice doing that but right now we're gonna fly back in and change the battery that's where I'm standing right there right on the street You know, uh, I grew up in Honduras, Central America, and actually they don't grow hay there because they don't have the winter months when there's no grass or the dry season when there's nothing for the, for the animals to eat like we do here in North America. And so it's like eternal springtime there. All the time there's plenty of grass for cattle to eat. So I never saw hay fields or hay bales except in pictures until I came to the States. Now I looked up on the USDA's.gov website to see how much uh, one of these round bales costs. Of course the cost is in the States and these that we're looking at are in Canada but in the States they're between 190 and $200 for each uh, each of these round bales. And I was counting just on this shot how many bales I could see in the shot and I counted almost 100. And if you could get $200 for each one that's about $20,000 dollars and Canadian it would certainly be that or more 
And that's not counting the bales that are on the side that I couldn't count and the ones in the other fields. Now here's an interesting one right here. This, uh, do you think the baler failed on this one? It just made a stack of hay. I was uh, kind of scratching my head and flying around it trying to figure it out. And I thought to myself, that definitely is not a round bale of hay. In actuality, I drove by a, about a few days later and that stack of hay had been turned into about 20 square bales, rectangular bales. So that's why they had stacked that hay up there. They were going to do something different with that. Now I'm coming around here. That might be where the farmer lives and his family or workers or something. It looks like a really nice residence. Now we're coming to this other field here on the other on the left side of where I was flying and there's something interesting here. See how there's some grass there in the middle that wasn't cut. A patch of grass and it's surrounded by these blue greenish bales that are covered in this poly plastic material. The patch there in the middle I don't know what that's all about or why they left it and it looks like they're trying to protect it by putting these bales around it. If you, any of you know what's going on here, let me know in the comments. It'd be interesting to figure that out. I drove by a couple days later and it was still there. Uh, now the, here's a greenhouse that's uh, to the right of the field that I was flying in front of and these are ginormous greenhouses in actuality it's uh, it's almost like they're they're almost like fields in themselves they're growing crops right inside of those greenhouses and I'm not sure what kind of crops they are but it must be something that doesn't grow naturally here in British Columbia because they need a tropical environment in that greenhouse maybe I don't know tomatoes uh, or some type of tropical fruit I'm not sure but just the size of these greenhouses is very impressive you can't tell from the street until you go up in a drone and see how big that area is And then uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fly over and cross the street because there's another field on the other side of the street. So I cross the street and the grass here is a different color. It's more golden, but they also made uh, hay bales out of it. So I'm not sure what variety it is, but uh, they're also baling them in these uh, plastic, in this plastic. It's called silage or haylage. It simulates the process of putting hay in a silo. That's why it's called silage. So they put it in that wrapper and it, it triggers a fermentation process. And it takes about two weeks for it to ferment completely and it produces a hay that is higher in uh, folic acid and vitamin B12 and it's just a special variety when they put it in those plastic containers. Anyway, it was a nice flight here. I'm uh, glad you came along with me. I'll see you in another video, and God bless.